Welcome to the Bell Training Academy. We're located in Fort Worth, Texas, and we've been training pilots and maintainers since the 1940s. Bell offers world-class training for all the commercial products, including the Bell 505, all variations of the 407, the Bell 429, the 412, the 525, and several legacy aircraft. At the Bell Training Academy, we are using the latest tools and technology to train today's pilots and maintainers. From full motion simulators to maintaining and rebuilding actual aircraft in our state-of-the-art facility, our trainers have thousands of hours of experience and know how to communicate as well as share their vast knowledge with our students. Let's take a moment to hear from Tim Roman and Ben Cruz about the new 525 training that's utilizing some of the most advanced training tools available. Welcome to the Bell Classroom Training Experience. My name is Tim Roman. I've been working here at the Bell Training Academy since 2012. I'm uh, working on the 525, developing pilot and maintainer training. Um, the nice thing about uh, the, the 525 is what we're doing now and is instead of using the PowerPoints, uh, we've got this nice Unity piece that we're using uh, where we're able to pull in the engineering CATIA models. Uh, we're actually using those so as the engineers make updates into those models, we can pull them in and add them to our training content. That way we're always constantly up to date on the training. Uh, we can also manipulate the aircraft, um, which gives us a better experience to, to make sure what it's going to look like once we get um, out to the aircraft. We can zoom in, we can look inside at different components um, and make it a, a, a better experience for us, to, like I said, to get ready once we get out to the actual aircraft. Uh, 525 uh, has 32 systems. We'll go through uh, during the training, we'll go through each of those systems. We'll go into great detail about the theory and operation of each system. Uh, for the maintainers, we'll do remove and install tasks, any special inspections that you're going to have. Um, the nice thing also about 525 is that we get a lot of fault codes for the maintainers. So uh, we'll go over those fault codes to make sure you can help troubleshoot any problems that come up with the aircraft. Uh, one of the other new features for the 525 is uh, the Tech Pubs. So Tech Pubs is using an international Tech Pub standard um, along with a technical standard English dictionary, which allows it for easier translation. Uh, so no matter where you're operating the aircraft at throughout the world, uh, you'll be able to translate that uh, into your native language for uh, reading the instructions to maintain the aircraft. So we'll go through, I'll kind of give you an example of what we're doing for the training. Um, so we'll go through and we have all the aircraft systems. Like I said, we can pick and choose which ones we want to go through. We'll go through each one we're going to go. So for us, the big thing that everybody's interested in is the fly-by-wire. Um, so it's the new big feature for us um, where it's reducing the, the workload for the maintainers. It makes it easier for the pilots so they can fly the aircraft and be more aware of what's going on around them. They don't have to work on flying the aircraft. Uh, as much as many inputs and stuff. We'll start highlighting systems. We'll go through the flight controls themselves. So the configuration in the cockpit is what's a little bit different. The big thing that we like to get across to everybody is that it's still a helicopter. It still has the same flight controls. They just look a little bit different. So they're sitting on the sides of the seats. But for the pilots, we really make it a point to make sure they understand it's still a collective. It's still a cyclic. It still does the same things when you're flying the aircraft. It's not really any different um, in that aspect of it. Uh, the actuators that actually make the inputs into the controls, so uh, you'll be able to see that there, we don't have any uh, controls, any mechanical linkage up there going through, so it's all gonna, that's the, the fly-by-wire feature of it. We'll go through each individual ones of those. Flight control computers, uh, doing all the configurations. Um, that's a little bit different as well, so we have three of those to make sure that the aircraft um, is safe to fly. Uh, the aircraft, we could lose one uh, down to one system and the aircraft still going to be able to fly to get back to where it needs to go safely. So um, they're triple redundant. Each one of the flight control computers runs a different section of the flight controls. They're all the same way. They're all configured the same way. They're all making the same inputs. They're just backing each other up, talking to each other to make sure that the aircraft is operating safely. Going into the controls, oops, we'll go through get into the collective control system. We can, uh, if we need to, the nice thing about the Unity features are that we can go in, we can zoom into the aircraft, we can move things around, which allows us to get different views. Makes it a little bit more integrated uh, for, 
for the students so that we can see and get a better idea of how the system's going to work, uh, what it's going to look like when we actually get out to the aircraft and the hangar to take a look at it. Uh, this nice thing about the control post for the maintainers is um, it's going to come already factory rigged. So all the controls and the artificial feedbacks and the springs and the stops that we have inside the control post are already going to come rigged. We do have access panels here on the sides so that we can get in there if we need to do any tweaking to that adjustment in there. Um, but that's part of what's going to give the pilots their artificial feel um, along with the trim actuators that we'll take a look at. Um, but again, we'll just have to do the simple control rigging is going to be within the cockpit. So where typically you have to do a lot of rig pins and run things all the way back to the, to the rotor head and things like that to get your flight controls rigged, the nice thing is the majority of the control, the mechanical inputs that you need to make are going to be right here in the cockpit underneath the floorboards. So for us, the good thing uh, that was done for 525 was looking at past history where the flight controls were not interconnected for uh, fly-by-wire stuff. So pilots would be making different inputs in certain situations um, and fighting each other trying to control the aircraft. So for us, they made sure that everything is interconnected. So whatever the pilot's doing, and his seat is connected to the controls on the co-pilot side. Um, and they're both going into the trim actuator with the same uh, input. So there's no confusion. There's no fighting with each other on um, what's going on. And again, the only thing that the mechanics are going to have to do is make sure this is rigged. And then we have some checks that we'll go over on how you're going to check to make sure that what inputs are being made here in the cockpit are actually being transmitted back to the rotor heads and input there uh, through the trim actuators. So uh, trim actuators up in the cockpit underneath the floor. So we have the one for the collective. Both of them go into. There's some stops and some artificial feels inside of there, some springs and uh, gradients and stuff to we'll go through in great detail of how that's going to interact. But it sends a signal back to the flight control computers that will process that information and then send it back to uh, the trim actuators that are connected to the flight controls themselves to the rotor head. Uh, and then we go through collective grips, uh, go through all the controls that are on the sticks. So in detail, we'll go through what's controlled through each of those switches. And we go into great detail onto the flight control computers, especially for the avionics guys. So they're the ones that will be uh, dealing the most with the flight control computers. We want to make sure that they have a good understanding of how everything's working, how they're going to troubleshoot, uh, what the messages are. Uh, that come up. That's the other great feature about the 525 is we have a lot of maintenance messages. So for the maintainers, it's going to be really nice. We have the fault isolation manual. We'll get the codes. We can go in and check the codes, which will drive us to what needs to be repaired on the aircraft itself. So now we've finished up our classroom portion of, for our theory training. Uh, what we'll do next is we will go out onto our maintenance hangar. So just like we have for all of our other model aircraft, we have a 525 maintenance trainer, uh, actual production representative helicopter out on the maintenance hangar. Uh, we'll go out there and we'll practice uh, actually removing parts, uh, installing parts, using the technical pubs so that you can get used to interacting with those technical pubs to follow the procedures and practice what we've gone over. Let's take a look inside our flight simulator with our instructor pilot, Ben Cruz. <laughs> Welcome back to the BTA. My name is Ben Cruz. I'm one of the instructor pilots here uh, at the Bell Training Academy. Currently, I'm certified in, to teach in the Bell 429, the 412 EP and EPI, as well as the brand new aircraft, the Bell 525. So after the completion of the two week ground school, now we're gonna start our full flight simulator events. So right outside of the simulator, is our dedicated brief and debrief rooms uh, that prior to each of the events we will go through for about an hour and talk about what we're going to do inside the simulator itself. Now that we're inside the sim we're ready to start our training. Here in the full flight simulator it is different than a lot of other fixed base training devices. This is full motion a level going to be a level D simulator uh, once the aircraft gets certified and it allows us to do multiple training exercises that we cannot safely do in the actual aircraft. 
auto rotations, tail rotor malfunctions, single engine failures, and multiple different malfunctions that may not be able to be accurately simulated in the aircraft itself, we can do here. That way we can ensure that proper training is complete and that those pilots that come through are ready to execute their mission in the real world. All right, now that we're all set, now, one of the biggest things about this aircraft is its ability, the way it's designed, to help take pressure off the pilot. Now, the aircraft has full-time four-axis stabilization. So as we lift off the ground into a hover, we can simply remove our hands and a hover hold takes control of the aircraft. Now, the aircraft holds its own position over the ground. So, let's go ahead and take off. Now, as I'm smoothly pulling up the controls here, the aircraft's starting to get light. I'm just relaxing the controls. And now the aircraft is going to go ahead and establish a hover over my designated spot. Now, in a normal aircraft, I wouldn't be able to take my hands off the controls unless uh, I didn't really want to uh, continue flying for the day. But for this aircraft, I can safely remove my hands, while not smart, I just guard them. The aircraft maintains its position over the ground. And now I can do a pedal turn with just not touching the pedals by simply moving a four-way beep trim switch on my collective. If I want to go ahead and come back the other direction, I can do so just by moving that same switch. All the while, the aircraft is holding and maintaining its position over that one single spot. If I just want to go ahead and increase airspeed by three to five knots on the cyclic, I can just beat myself forward and establish a ground speed. Now the aircraft is going to hold that speed I just have to control my altitude. So it's coming forward and it's going to maintain this heading, this airspeed, until I tell it to do something else. Now I can go ahead and slow it down. I can come up to 50 feet. Just nice and slow commanding the aircraft to do what I want it to do. Now the takeoff profile is very simple. Multiple ways that you can do this for us today. I'm simply going to push a, the nose forward a little bit and command in some airspeed until the speed that I desire is set. This is smooth, controlled acceleration and the climb commanded by me. As I'm coming forward, my airspeed, ground speed is continuing to increase. I am just adjusting the power. The aircraft is maintaining the heading, the direction that I desire smooth acceleration to my commanded speed. Now once we achieve the desired speed, just release, monitor the flight controls. Now the aircraft is going to maintain that speed and continue to maintain that climb up to my desired altitude. I can adjust my altitude, how fast I'm climbing with my collective the airspeed is being held by the pitch of the aircraft. Now, if I wanted to, say I came into the clouds, I can go ahead and couple up the aircraft by pressing go around. Now, by pressing the go around switch on the collective, the aircraft go ahead 
and couples to the flight director, establishes airspeed up to 80 knots, establishes a climb rate of about 700 to 750 feet per minute, and goes to a wings level attitude. Now that those are captured, I could come down into my system and I'm going to tell it I want to capture my current airspeed. I'm going to set a level off altitude and for this example I'm going to go ahead and set 5,000 feet and I will tell it vertical speed and then I'm going to center my heading bug and I'm going to go to heading mode. Now I'm in full control of my aircraft coupled to my flight director down on the panel. So if I wanted to come right to a heading of 270, I simply turn the knob down here on the control panel. And the aircraft smoothly rolls into that desired angle of bank and then it will hold that for me. If I want to increase my climb rate, I can command the aircraft to do so by changing my reference with my collective. I can also change my airspeed by increasing my airspeed reference for my flight director. This aircraft is built in with an autorotative entry assist program that in case a dual engine flame out is sensed the aircraft will automatically try to assist the pilots getting into an autorotative profile. Now, once we climb up and get leveled off at 5,000 feet, I'm going to roll both of our COSIF knobs down to idle. Now, the aircraft itself, or the clause logic, once seeing that, will automatically attempt to lower the collective, adjust our pitch attitude, to an established airspeed and try to regain our RPM, all without input from the pilot. Now, this helps us in case we are off the controls looking outside. This allows us or enables the aircraft to help us out by getting us to that initial profile for the auto rotation. Once we're established in the profile, the pilot still needs to come on the controls, obviously, uh, to fly us safely down to an autorotative touchdown. But the logic in the system helps us out. We are level at 5,000 feet, 100 knots. I'm going to go ahead. There's one, there's two. Now the aircraft is smoothly lowering the collective trying to control our NR. The aircraft is pitching the nose slightly to bring our airspeed back. Centering the ball, keeping our heading in line, maintaining our RPM reference, bringing us down smoothly. I still have not touched the controls. Now, once we are established, the aircraft is looking to control and hold these parameters once they are set. Now it's up to the pilot to come on the controls once they are stabilized and go ahead and send us up for that autorotative landing. This system is helped or designed to help out the pilot to get us at least established in that profile. I'm going to go ahead and put us back to normal. And I'm going to recover from our autorotative descent. All right, now we're back to level. A couple of the nice things, uh, differentiators in the aircraft. With the fly-by-wire technology, I can simply push against the flight controls to an established angle of bank now, the aircraft and the flight control computers see that rate of movement, they see what I want, and then they maintain that for me. Now, once I'm satisfied with what I see, I can either leave it in, I can beep ourselves out, 
or to simply press against that control again back to a wings level condition. Multiple different ways to control this helicopter. Now, let's take a look at the oil rig. Now that we are complete with some of the basic introductory maneuvers, let's look at something a little bit more advanced. Now, here at the Bell Training Academy, we have the ability to go in and do mission-specific training based upon the customer need. Included in that mission-specific training regime that we just discussed is also instrument flight training. Now, for those customers with instrument ratings, during this portion, we will also be covering instrument approach procedures for both non-precision and precision approaches. That include ILS, GPS approaches, VOR, or other approaches that might be out there, including maybe OSAP approaches for the oil rigs. Now, with the improved safety enhancement features built into the aircraft, out on the oil rig, we can go ahead, lift up, and again, that four-axis four full-time stabilization of the aircraft will help us hold that position over the deck. Now, as I pull into that hover, I'm gonna smoothly rotate my nose slowly away from those obstacles and begin my forward transition for takeoff. Guiding the aircraft out, making sure I'm smoothly away climbing out as I go. Now, as I go, I can go ahead, set myself up, and adjust the aircraft to where I want it to go. Now again, coming in now, I went ahead, coupled the aircraft to the flight director utilizing the go-around function. The aircraft is smoothly accelerating up to that 80 knots, wings level condition, and now climbing up to my desired altitude, all with a single press of the button. I just have to tell the aircraft what to do from there. Now, it's a nice thing as we're approaching these clouds, that I'm coupled up, the stabilization of the aircraft re greatly reducing the workload on each of the pilots. To recover from this environment, we need to be able to shoot instrument approaches. Utilizing the Garmin Touch Controller and the G5000, we can go ahead and set up an instrument approach into whatever airfield that we so desire. As long as it's loaded into the aircraft, we can program it in and have the aircraft fly it. As we're traveling through the clouds, looking down at our systems, we can take a look at our moving map display on our multi-function display, or with our horizon and synthetic vision on the G5000. Now, this gives us heading references out there as well as additional airports, waypoints, etc., that might be loaded into our system to help us with navigation. Now, as we maneuver onto our approach path, we'll go ahead, set us up, increasing our situational awareness with our displays that we have set up. As we maneuver the aircraft onto that final approach course, once we are all set, stabilized, we can go ahead and tell the aircraft to go ahead and shoot that approach automatically by arming the approach on our flight director panel. Now that it's armed, it's gonna go ahead and fly 
capture that approach, that localizer and glide slope on this ILS back down in to our airport. And our glide slope is captured. The aircraft is smoothly bringing us down along that glide path down to our airport. Maintaining our airspeed. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and arm the deceleration feature. That's gonna slow us down when it becomes appropriate down to 80 knots. Now, another nice safety feature of the aircraft is the auto level feature. Now, what this will do on any precision approach as we're coming down, the aircraft is looking to level an established level flight at 50 feet with your commanded airspeed and following either that localizer signal or that lateral navigation off of the GPS. Again, it will level off at that 50 feet runway center line in order to give the pilot the best chance and relative ease of landing the helicopter off of that approach profile coming down in bad weather. And here we go, breaking out to our airport. Aircraft is beginning to level off. Coming in and stabilizing. Now, we take that flight director off and we begin to manually fly the aircraft down to the ground. And I think I'll just taxi us off the runway here and back to home base. Thank you for joining us today. This was a brief overview of the 525 training syllabus here at the Bell Training Academy. Please, if you're interested, go to bellflight.com training to find out some of our other offerings here at the Training Academy. Thank you and have a good day.